Hello, hello everyone. If you want to go fisticuffs, then fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary here for you. I uh, decided to go with a little bit of Anchorman love for today's team names. Jack Johnson on the blue team, Tom O'Leary on the red, and some pretty major players in here. We have Mega Zero down here as the AD carry Ezreal. Hashin Shin as the mid lane Vladimir. Probably going to go top lane, just uh, running through the mid right now. Void Boss is over here in, in the top lane, the uh, 1v1 star coming out of low pro tournaments. And uh, really, all of Tom O'Leary going to be some major names. Wing of Zabdeath X. On the mid lane, Gragas, Nidus, her main supporting down bottom with Fabi, the gatekeeper, as AD carry Caitlyn, and then the one, the only double lift, playing some jungle Lee Sin. And this is, uh, get, this is gonna be a really interesting game. I, I feel like Tom O'Leary is a little stacked with some major players, but of course, Jack Johnson, uh, always the brawler, always the fighter, might be able to come out on this one. Let's see, not only is he a talented boxer, but he's also. Quite the astounding musician. And so uh, we'll see who comes through. Taking a look at some of these starts, it seems to be pretty standard. The uh, Doran's ring picked up is really the only major difference over the Doran's shield down there on the supports. But that's pretty standard seeing Thresh go with that Doran shield. He can trade a little bit better. He does forego some of the gold generation that comes from an item like an ancient coin or potentially a relic shield. However, he wants to be able to get in there and harass when he can. It might be difficult up against a Zyra Caitlyn lane who has so much range and potential harass. But if he can do it and can keep some of the damage off from that range, then all the power to him. Look at him already going aggressive there with the flay backwards. Zyra doesn't have too much at level 1 besides the snare. Uh, Zyra can't really do too much damage and also can't generate any plants at level 1. So he will be fine just to, uh, to trade right on there. A nice Piltover Peacemaker connecting from Fabi will help bring Zealot a little bit low, but the health potion will be there to keep him right up. The Harass going back and forth. Nidus Remain actually taking out quite a bit of his health. Nidus Remain running up rather aggressively. Mega Zero does get sent up, actually throws the barrier immediately. Piltover Peacemaker doesn't connect, and so he will escape off the end with the Ignite on top of him. That seems like a rather aggressive play there, just trying to get him low to force him out of lane or at least keep him a little bit careful to miss some CS. Fabi not going to grab it up there, the Descent, it's landing onto a minion. And Zealot TK will be fine, just uh, staying right back here, away from harm. End top, Void Boss is already pushing on here. Renekton has a much stronger early game against Vladimir, since he can get in and punish Vlad pretty easily. Which is something that Vlad can't sustain from too well, although he's doing a rather good job of it so far. He did start out with the door and shield. Actually, Void Boss goes in rather aggressively. He has to be careful, though. There's a gank coming in from Sicko Scott from behind. Void Boss tries to flash, but he gets knocked back from Sicko Squad, who grabs the first blood there with the excessive force. And a nice gank here from Vi. Hashinshin following up in the bottom lane. Or in the mid lane, sorry. Pack and Woof does go in. Double Lift tries to chase on here. He war jumps forward using that trinket. And with one more auto attack, should be able to get this. Peck and Woof jumps over the wall, but the Sonic Wave finds him. Peck and Woof tried to juke back as well, but it uh, wasn't quite enough to get him out of that one. Double Lift picking up a return kill. And. Right after Peck and Woof found the kill mid. I was trying to look where the third kill came out there. There was a lot of action in just a few seconds across the map. But it did result in a two kill, and two kills for Jack Johnson over the one kill on Tom O'Leary. And uh, just a couple hundred gold, so nothing too major. Might be a few extra potions, potentially a uh, an early pair of boots. But uh, really, it'll be up to how these early ends continue to go. Ooh, how Void Boss might actually look to go in aggressively on the Hashin Shin. Sigo Scott will be roaming up top here. We'll see what he can find. He doesn't have the red buff, though. The Vault Breaker is going to come across. Not going to connect on the Void Boss. He actually turns around to fight it out. Has the Cold of Meek for the health. And the Ruthless Predator will send up Sicko Scott and keep him from chasing on. Void Boss is low here. Zealot TKO even lower. Falls very, very close to death in the bottom lane. We'll have to recall out of this one as Mega Zero just looks to try and farm up into the turret. Nidus and Fabi's aggression has been paying off for them pretty well. Fabi has a 15 kill or CS lead. A kill lead might be a little ridiculous. Certainly would be interesting, but instead we'll just get a, a decent amount of gold there over Mega Zero. If we take a look at the totals coming in here already, that's almost 1,200 gold up on Fabi. If he goes back now, he could grab a uh, Vampiric Scepter, maybe some boots, but I suspect he wants to stay in lane until he can get a BF Sword. Doublelift is actually roaming down here, war jumping over the golems. 
He does uh, take away the Golem and might be looking for the dive. Mega Zero is so low, and if he can land a Sonic Wave, oh, he'll be spotted out by the ward, though. <laughs> Piltover Peacemaker is going to grab it regardless. The Gatekeeper not going to allow Mega Zero to get any farther in ELO if he can help it as he grabs out a kill solo in the bottom lane. 1,500 gold under his belt. Zealot TKO threw a pretty rough lantern, but Sicko Stop was still able to get in. There's the Vault Breaker. Fabi does flash it, though. And it looks like he should be able to escape here. Zealot TKO actually goes in rather aggressively with the Flay. He does throw the Knight in Fabi, but he takes way too much damage. And I press the wrong key to avoid the absolutely gruesome devastation there of Zealot TKO. I will, uh... I guess I should play that off like I meant to do it. Hashin Shin, actually falling rather low, is uh, going to be our next target here. Void Boss might be looking to go in here. Hashin Shin does have his blood pool, so we'll be able to keep off a bit of that. A Void Boss just walking right up to him. He throws on the Ruthless Predator. He almost kills him before he goes in the blood pool, but look at all the damage Void Boss is taking. He'll escape with barely any health, but knock her about the kill. And Hashin Shin just stays alive under here, really no worse for the wear. Void Boss might be looking for it again. He won't have that invulnerability, but he can't take any more than one turret shot. And so Void Boss will have to play this oh so carefully. He throws that ultimate on there, and if anything is going to allow him to survive a turret shot, it is that Dominus. He clears out the wave and then gets the heck out of dodge. It looks like Sicko Scott might want to come up here from the river to stop him. We'll see how well he can do with that job. He doesn't have his ultimate yet. Void Boss does lose the Dominus, turns around with the Ruthless Predator. And get some health back with the Cole the Meek. He dodges out from that uh, Assault and Battery. No, from the uh, Void Breaker and Vault Breaker. Words are so difficult. But it doesn't matter as Void Boss grabs the kill up there in the top lane. Sicko Scott going down after blowing the Flash. And that's not the kind of gank you want in your lane. Where uh, not only does your enemy not die, but where your own jungler feeds them a kill. That is three kills onto Void Boss up top. And he is doing his job as an early lane aggressor. Double is spending all of his time here in the enemy jungle has uh, not gone back to buy anything. He's already level 7 over the level 5 of Sicko Scott. He hasn't been able to buy, but he's just been uh, really disrupting this enemy lane. Nidus Remain flashes in for the root. He doesn't land it, but Double Lift is able to get in there. A good flay from Zelt TKO keeps him off, but not for long enough as Fabi just walks across. They're now going in on the Mega Zero. A good Pillar of Beastmaker connects. Mega Zero pops the barrier, and he's alive for now. Nidus Remain is going to go down here after throwing a futile ultimate, but Fabi grabs yet another kill. Sicko Scott comes in with the Assault and Battery. He's able to dunk him for the double kill. Peckinwolf er, doesn't land the snare, but it uh, might not be necessary. Double Lift throws on the Sonic Wave. He's still alive here. Sicko Scott wants to give the kill over to Peckinwolf, who will grab it up there with the Distortion. And that's three kills here for Jack Johnson over Tom O'Leary. We'll see how well they can uh, keep this advantage since right now they aren't doing so hot. But uh, still, that 2,000 gold is going to look pretty in their pockets. Wing of Death gets caught up in a pretty rough spot. Has to body slam over the wall. Sicko Scott uh, just going to force him out of their turf. Say, uh, back off, fat man. Now Wings of Death. Just going to go right back up here and keep on farming. He does have a very solid advantage over Peck and Woof. Not only does Wings of Oh, man. Void Boss coming out enormous. I would like to see exactly how that transpired. If you will just bear with me for a few seconds. As Void Boss uh, is really up here against a, a almost max health Hashin Shin. He throws the Dominus very aggressively and goes in there with a huge Ruthless Predator. The Slice and the Dice going to prove way too much for the Blood Lord. And uh, these kills are really snowballing the top lane for Void Boss. Just one after the other. Picking up the early Negatron Cloak going to really diffuse a lot of the magic damage coming out from Hashin Shin. Peckinwolf as well won't be able to touch uh, Renekton too much once they get into some mid-game team fights, and I really suspect it uh, it's going to be a rough spot for Jack Johnson to come into. Had a little bit of lag there. Hopefully, no one else saw that. Zealot TKO will uh, really try and uh, keep his AD carry safe, keep him up farming, but. He's had a rough time. Mega Zero has been able to catch up and farm quite a bit, but the gold is still nowhere similar. If we show that again, that's 3,600 here on Fa on uh, Fabi. He has an entire 50% advantage over Mega Zero here. That's already the BF Sword and the Vampire Acceptor. And almost the turret as Fabi and Nidus remain. Work away with the auto attacks. That will be the turret going down here. As they do take out a good chunk of change. Fabi actually escapes out of the gold range. But he turns around for a kill on the Zealot TKO. He flashes, allowing Mega Zero to tank that up. And that won't be the kill. He did uh, miss 
about 75 gold coming out from that turret that Nidus Hermain did grab instead. But uh, still, Fabi it won't necessarily set Fabi behind. Peck and Wolf coming in for some huge damage on the Wings of Death. Throws down the snare. Wings of Death tries to drink it up. He throws the ultimate, but to no avail. Peck and Wolf dodges out of that one. And with the red buff, is able to turn around for the kill. Up top, double lift and void boss diving on the hash and shin. Grab the double kill under the turret after eliminating Sicko Scott. But the shutdown goes down on the void boss who didn't pop his Dominus in time. It's just like the... Uh, I know, the, the, the hardest part of playing Trindamir as well is forgetting to press R, and it looks like that carried over here to his Renekton. It shouldn't send him back too far, though. He has a pickaxe on top of his Spectre's Cal. Oh, Zealot TKO coming in here. He actually catches his Death Sentence onto a plant, and Fabi decides thank you very much, Secret Service plant. Sicko Scott now roaming in here, wants to go onto Fabi, but doesn't... Oh, he has a Sultan Battery, he just doesn't have the range for it. Snared up there by Nidus, her main won't be able to continue on. And Fabi staying alive here, the Gatekeeper going to continue his reign 4-1-1 in one with a BF Sword and a Vampire Acceptor, turning that into a Bloodthirster soon enough. Wings of Death uh, continue to take a little bit of harassment of Beck and Woof. He's not nearly as squishy as it looked like he was earlier on. And he is still able to farm up quite a bit. Beck and Woof comes in with the distortion and won't add that up to dodge around from double left. Who throws on the Dragon's Rage, but Wings of Death doesn't want to come in here for the gank. And that was uh, a good defense from Sicko Scott. He might look to catch out double left. He's able to stop his jump over the wall with the Assault and Battery and slam him down for Peck and Woof to grab out that last hit. And that was one of the sickest Assault and Batteries I have ever seen. Void Boss continuing his massive abuse up in the top lane. Oh, the Ruthless Predator really doing a number on Hoshinshin's health. He doesn't have the tools he needs to be able to survive through this. Even though he's built up that Seeker's Arm Guard for the armor, and even though he has a good number of health potions, it's just not enough here. Mega Zero going to help Hoshinshin clear out that wave because clearly that's... Uh that's the assistance he needs, but uh, at this point, it's really looking pretty dire for Jack Johnson. There's only about a 3,000 gold differential, but what really matters are the objectives and the massive, uh, the massive placement of kills. You can see that Fabi's coming up huge here with four. Peck and Woof does come up with another four Jack Johnsons that will be a good advantage for the Mega Zero falling solo. Fabi tries to net aggressively, throws the Pillar of Peacemaker and connects, but Fabi might be in a rough spot there. Sicko Scott is able to grab out the kill there as uh, they do lose actually yet another two kills for Jack Johnson. Nidus Domain still trying to escape here. Peck and Wolf has something to say about that though. Throws across the silence. Sicko Scott falling low to Nidus Domain, but won't take enough damage as Peck and Wolf grabs up another kill. And that's a six and one LeBlanc. He's starting to look scary here. Peck and Wolf might be the saving grace that Jack Johnson needs. Going for the very early home guard boots as well. A very interesting pickup that I normally wouldn't expect to see before he's picked up much ability power at all. But uh, the way that he's been playing, he's going to get the gold soon enough for some major items. Right now he has 1600, which is going to turn into that needlessly large rod to uh, to eventually work up to a Deathfire Grasp. And there it is. When he gets a Deathfire Grasp, it'll really work well into his combo to not only deal 15% of max health and magic damage, but increase all magic damage dealt by 20%. That sounds pretty massive to me, and I'm sure that Peck and Wolf will show us exactly what that means on the health bars. Fabi falling low here, trying to trade back on the Peck and Wolf and actually holding his own quite well. The Peck and Wolf has some backup here, and with the auto attack and the ignite, he will grab up his seventh kill of the game here. Is the gate really being kept? Peck and Wolf uh, might have something to say about that, and a little bit of tricky mind games coming out from Peck and Wolf. Always. Uh, a, f a frustrating job for cameramen, to say the least, trying to trace the movements of that uh, oh, Mega Zero having to flash away from that Sonic Wave. We'll take the Thresh Express right out of there. And my childhood lisp did just uh, <laughs> pop up on me. Thanks a lot, Mom and Dad, for the genetics. Void Moss is coming out pretty large in farm here. He has taken out that turret. I would like to see him put some other objectives here soon, though, since the team's gold advantage hasn't increased too much over the last few minutes. He really needs to get into a spot, into a teamfight scenario where Peck and Wolf can't necessarily get off a free kill. And if they can punish Peck and Wolf for his dives into the team with the massive advantage that uh, Tom O'Leary has been able to accumulate, then they should be able to take down things like turrets, like dragons when it does respawn. But 
Oh, Mega Zero in the bottom lane alongside Sicko Scott will be able to take out another kill on the Fabi. He has lost his advantage quite large, and it looks like Directed Camera doesn't want to help us out at all here. Wings of Death trying to find the kill on the Beckon Wolf. The Ignite will be able to take him out, and the shutdown here for Grogas might want to turn that into a double kill. Zealot TKO is so low here, he does flay Wings of Death into the turret. And that actually might be enough to save his life here. He now looks to go in as Sickest Clock comes up from the side with the Assault and Battery. That'll be enough to say goodbye. Void Boss throws the Dominus coming in from behind. And now Sicko Scott might be the one in trouble. He does Vault Breaker over the wall, and he might find the escape. Void Boss doesn't have the slice and dice for a few more seconds here. Sicko Scott is going to be able to Vault Breaker out of that flash. Void Boss wanted to get on the other side of him to be able to stop that Vault Breaker since it does uh, interrupt once it hits a champion. And it looks like Sicko Scott will be able to escape from this one. I'm surprised at how uh, effectively he was able to do so. Mega Zero with his very first kill of the game on top of taking a turret as well. The first one for Jack Johnson here will pick up his blood. They're sir, coming close to equaling out uh, Favi's attack damage and overall team fight effectiveness. However, as it gets later on to the game, it'll really come down to, uh, oh my goodness, the fighting will it never end. Nidus remain caught up there in a rather unfortunate spot, taken down solely by Peckin with Zealot TKO, not even grabbing assist out of that one, and that is just the absolute power of LeBlanc that you cannot underestimate Fabi. Could be caught out here. Sicko Scott looks to be on the prowl. His assault and battery is almost up. And it looks like Vi and Caitlyn might be in a little bit of a partner spat here. Fabi not doing much to run away. Sicko Scott able to take this up one versus one. But uh, leave the kill up for Peckenwolf to come in and finish it off. A 10 and 2 LeBlanc going to be terrifying here. Wings of Death in the middle lane grabbing out a kill onto the support. And those are the, uh, the, the massive damage potentials coming out from both mid lane AP carries. Just showing how easily they can take out a support who doesn't have too much health yet. Zyra is going for a particularly aggressive AP build with some magic penetration from the Sorcerer's Shoes and the Haunting Guys. And uh, Thresh really only has a, a Sightstone to his name. That will be the third turret of the game on Tom Leary's side falling down. Going to result in uh, what's no more than a 3,000 gold advantage. Nidus remain falling so low to Peck and Wolf, but he has to back off due to the damage from Wings of Death X, and they almost find the kill out there. If Nidus remain had ignited, they would have been able to find it, but I'm not sure he expected that amount of damage. Double lift in the top lane going in on the Hashin Shin. We'll chase him around, give him uh, a nice game of Ring Around the Rosie. Sicko Scott comes up from behind though, and Double Lift has to be careful. He dragons, rages away. That Vi Double Lift flashes, but the Assault and Battery doesn't care about your gap closers. Void Boss now wants to make it up for a one for one, and turn around, maybe make it up once again. Sicko Scott trying to Vault Breaker away from here. We'll be able to make it over the wall. And that will be the flat one for one Fabi. I'm able to finish off that uh, mid inner turret, so the objective game is actually uh, looking to rear its ugly head here with Tom O'Leary, able to uh, use that excellent range coming out of Avi's Caitlyn. He has picked up a lot of attack speed and attack damage. Mega Zero here, might want to look for the outplay though, Piltover Peacemaker not connecting. Mega Zero uh, not able to find that, had to be careful with that much vision in the enemy jungle of another member of Tom O'Leary potentially uh, coming up with a good uppercut to the jaw. Zell TKO just looking to absorb some experience in the mid lane and he is falling rather behind as the support tends to do. He is equal to the other support and actually what's most interesting here in the experience game is that Fabi for all of his uh, farming efforts is only level 9 so far here 19 minutes in the game. He's the lowest in the game below uh, below both supports actually so that's going to be a pretty rough spot. It means that Fabi won't be able to uh, deal quite as much damage, won't have necessarily the same scaling attack speed, scaling attack damage, that kind of thing from his stats, and his ultimate won't do nearly as much damage as it could if he simply had a second rank in it. And as long as he keeps sharing experience here with the rest of his teammates, he'll actually be, uh, be pretty behind for a while here, so I'd like to see him doing a bit more uh, a bit more solo farming until he can catch up to everyone and until then they really should avoid team fight scenarios cuz look at the damage Peckenwolf can throw down on the Fabi that was a nice juicy level 9 target that I just spent a minute talking about and it turned out to be a rather fruitful conversation as uh, Fabi did take his sixth kill of the game he has the most of anyone tied with Hashin Shin 
And it's, uh, it's looking like this gate is rather shoddily kept right now. Let's see if he can turn it around. I would like to see a comeback story, but, uh... Who knows, maybe he is not in his prime. Sicko Scott now looking to catch on the double lift, but Wings of Death X is there as well. And it looks like another kill here for Jack Johnson. Double lift trying to jump away here, but the snare is going to land that enormous range from Peck and Woof. Able to keep him in time for Mega Zero to finish it off with a Mystic Shot. And it looks like they will now push onto these turrets. Two fallen here for Tom O'Leary. Peck and Wolf looks to move on the Fabi again. Does miss his combo, but won't uh, take too much retaliation for that. That will be a third turret here. And this will actually bring the gold almost even. Only 600 gold separates these teams. That's a couple of kills, but it's not going to matter too much in terms of items. In terms of how strongly these teams fight. What really matters here are the items coming out, and we can see that uh, Ezreal is on his way to a Trinity Force, not quite there yet. The biggest items I see, though, are on uh, are on Peckinwolf in that mid lane with the Deathfire Grasp, and then the Abyssal Scepter on the way. That's going to keep off a lot of the magic damage from both Wings of Death X and Knight as her main. That'll also give some good magic resistance reduction whenever he's in the vicinity, and since LeBlanc does a lot more damage with that distortion and the mimic distortion the armor the magic resistance reduction will almost always be effective there oh no he actually goes for the void staff okay that's a much more typical buy i just i saw the blasting one and the uh negatron cloak and i wanted to make a conclusion for myself but i will leave that for the color casters Still Void Staff coming out for a very, very strong mid-game, opening up a, a pretty good late-game build, too. That's going to be 20% uh, amplified damage, 35% uh, reduced from the Void Staff. And Void, Spo Void Boss, with yet another kill up in the top lane, is able to uh, grab that alone without any assistance from Double Lift or Knight as her main. And now this could be Tom O'Leary's uh, push on in on to the turrets. Let's see how many <laughs> how many of the prepositions we can use. Oh, Sicko Scott. Going to be caught up there by the Sonic Waves. Devil TKO is there on the side. Is going to throw the lane to the safety of a Sicko Scott. Oh, the uh, Descent catches on, but it doesn't look like Zelt TKO wants to take that flight of death. And Double Lift won't want to stick around for the push here. It looks like Tom O'Leary will back off. Mechanwolf going to catch on to Fabi here. Do a good amount of damage, but not able to finish him off. It will force Fabi back, or at least keep him in the jungle, uh, trying to lifesteal up for a good amount of time without a lot of mana, though. Yeah, it's going to be the recall here as Fabi uh, tries to regain some of his composure that he's lost throughout this mid-game. He's had a rough time finding many last hits. Oh, Wings of Death X grabbed up here by the Death Sentence. Zealot TKO throws the uh, the box that hits no one, and that might be Tom O'Leary's cue to go in. If Wings of Death X can grab an explosive cask in there, that could be a really solid engage here for the red team, but they can't be all too sure of it, apparently, as they do just look to uh, turn this into a full-blown ARAM with ha Hosh and Shin. Split pushing up in the top lane. Void Boss will come up there eventually to stop him out. And they actually have to be careful since Void Boss has been able to find a couple of solo kills up there in the past. Void Boss tries to slice through that wall. Instead turns his attention there. He doesn't steal it away. Hashinchen grabbing up the large golem. And uh, that'll be Operation 100% worth it. Double lift catches on with the Sonic Wave to Mega Zero. He tries to Arcane Shift away. Wings of Death X has explosive cast. Mega Zero is not cut up by that, but it's not quite... Going to matter there as Double Lift and Wings of Death X have a word to say with him. Double Lift going to tank this up to the face as they work down that turret, and that will be number five here for Tom O'Leary. But only 600 gold separating the teams really means this is anyone's game. The objectives falling left and right, going to leave no one to stand up amidst the rubble. Void Boss goes in aggressively on the Hosh and Shin, but has to be careful as Sicko Scott comes in from behind. He ball breakers across Void Boss, and he will fall here against two members of the enemy team. Peck and Woof taking out a turret in the mid lane. Will actually look to turn this around on the double lift, but does he have the residual damage? Double lift is so low. The Dragon's Rage comes across Peck and Woof trying to find this here, and it looks like he will find the Rampage there. Wings of Death X will not be fooled by the clone as Peck and Wolf escapes for free off the top here. Knight is her main, actually going to turn it around on the Peck and Wolf. The Ignite is down, and that will be a very 
dead. LeBlanc, Wings of Death X, now going to look for the kill on the Hashin Shin who throws that blood pool. Nidus remain in a rough spot, lands a knockup, and Hashin Shin will be no longer for this world. The fights are coming left and right, up and down, top to bottom, and uh, no one is quite emerging the victor yet. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. My uh, girlfriend will be arriving on the train in 15 minutes, and unless we see a victor soon, I may have to leave early. But we'll see exactly uh, where this night leaves us. I would love to finish out this game. That's proving to be quite exciting. Taking a look into some of these later game builds, we see the Spear of Visage finished there on Double Lift. We have the Ravenous Hydra going into a uh, particularly tanky build after that on Void Boss with some good aggression though from the Brutalizer. Wings of Death with the very typical Gragas build of the Athens Unholy Grail and the Death Cap. Now this could be the interesting fight we're looking for as the Baron goes down completely blindly. Everyone has the dash to get over the wall except for the range from Fabianitis Remain who can uh, do everything from right across here from safety. That will be the Baron Nasher for free, done completely outside of turret range. Void Boss did have to use the Dominus for that, so they might not want to fight immediately, but a good amount of gold coming out here will uh, really only just barely keep them in the lead. Let's see if Void Boss has something to say to Hashin Shin, who looks like he's not, uh, not too healthy up here. He throws the Ghost to try and escape from Void Boss here, and it looks like that might be enough to dissuade him from the chase. The rest of Tom O'Leary pushing up here in the mid lane. Shoe Shop Barrage coming across just to try and keep the minions a little too ill to uh, tank up the turret. And let's see if Tom O'Leary can get in here. Fabi going in for the auto attacks on the turret. We'll chip that down slowly, but surely they need a little more damage out of that, though. Peck and Wolf buying up an elixir of uh, brilliance. I like that response because it shows that, you know, for the next four minutes, the enemy is going to have a Baron buff. Oh, Void Boss tries to go in here on Hashin Shin. He does grab the turret, but is able to finish him off due to the well timed Zonyas. And as I was saying, the Elixir of Brilliance is a good response to the Baron buff here. However, it wasn't enough to save that inhibitor turret. Sicko Scott now dueling on here to double lift, who does safeguard away. And it looks like there's fighting going all around here on the perimeter. Nidus remain actually falling low, and it looks like three members here of Jack Johnson will continue on. Peck and Wolf grabbing up with the Sigil of Silence and the auto attack. And that will be one member down here for Tom O'Leary. Double lift and Void Boss now fighting this out. He throws the Dominus, and there's the ace in the hole coming across onto Sicko Scott, who is shut down there. Xyla TKO will be able to escape off the side, but there are four members alive here of Tom O'Leary. And they are looking to throw some punches. Peck and Woof doing a nice little combo there on the double lift. Not going to take him out too much. The Spirit Visage really keeping a lot of that uh, damage off. And it looks like Tom O'Leary will be making a full retreat out of the base. Only to resume in the next couple of minutes. Taking a look at some of these gold totals. Those are, uh, that's over a thousand on everyone here. Some individuals having two thousand. And so they most certainly want to go back and buy, spend that hard-earned cash on some nice items that they can use. Uh, because you might as well be carrying some more uh, blades, shields, armor. All that good stuff that you really use in, in fighting. And it looks like Nidus Hermain has uh, actually quite a lot to spend up. I'm interested to see where exactly he will go with the remainder of his build. Fabi... With a solid auto attack base build, I'll have to assume he's going to get a uh, Last Whisper out of this. He just wants to farm up for that 2300 gold to be able to finish off that item. And uh, Rando and Doman coming out from Double Lift. He's gotten to the point where building damage on Lisa and really isn't too effective anymore. Except for maybe a late game Last Whisper. And instead, he wants to be able to just uh, get in and disrupt the enemy team as well as he can. That's where the pickaxe is going in that build. But uh, right now, the Rando and Doman going to slow up uh, the enemies for quite some time. Void Boss now looking to go aggressively on the Hashin Shin. And if he can take out this solo kill in time, this would be a major advantage here for Tom O'Leary. Hashin Shin looks to fall here to double if he throws the Zanyas to look good. But he won't be long for this world. He does actually buy a lot of time. And there is Sicko Scott and... 
Oh, Vo Double Lift is able to grab out the kill there with the Dragon's Rage Void Boss. Escapes off the side here, and Double Lift will now look to duel on the Sicko. Scott, Wings of Death, grabs a kill onto Zealot TKO. Void Boss comes back in here. He has the Cole, the Meek for the health back. Sicko Scott wants to find the kill. Void Boss is... Dominus is up, but he will stay alive, and this might actually be the game as four fall here for Jack Johnson. We'll see how fast they can push on. They have super minions coming into the enemy base from the mid lane, and this could be the game-winning push. Only Peckinwolf is alive to defend. Fabi, instead of going for that, uh, for that last whisper, like I suspected, actually went for the Banshee's Veil, which is going to help him from being one comboed from Peck and Wolf. So a nice pick up there. Now Double Lift going into Peck and Wolf will force the flash out. The auto attacks are coming through. The base is under siege and this might be the game here. Tom O'Leary looking to close it out before 31 minutes, but the remainder here of Jack Johnson have respawned. Hosh and Shin running in there, throwing the Tides of Blood. Void Boss taking up that turret, turning on the Hosh and Shin with some massive damage. He throws the Blood Pool and he looks to survive. For now, Pilter or Peacemaker finishing him off though, and that is only one down on Jack Johnson. Peck and Wolf coming across from the side, not able to find a kill. Ace or uh, Assault and Battery there on the sick or on the Fabby. Fabby actually falling rather low there, and the Mystic Shot will be able to force him down. Void Boss falling low as well. Dice is out. Wings of Death actually picks up the return kill on to Peck and Wolf. But uh, they do lose Wings of Death in the meantime. Now Void Boss incredibly low tries to escape here from Sicko Scott, who does not have his Assault and Battery. Void Boss actually throws a Dominus, turns around on the Mega Zero, double with flashes in for the kill. Let's see if he can escape from Sicko Scott. He throws the ward over. He smites for the health back. And Double Lift uh, always able to grab the Resonating Strike over. Just looks to auto-attack for some health back, and he actually realizes he is scot free here. And actually, he's going to turn back around here to chase on the Sicko Scott. Oh, he misses the Sonic Wave, though. And now he's trading on. There's the Tempest, the Cripple for the Auto Attack Slow and the Dragon's Rage. We're going to try and disengage this. Vault Breaker comes in from Sicko Scott. He has his Assault and Battery if it's needed. Baron is up in a minute and 20 seconds. Assault and Battery comes across on a double lift. Sicko Scott is there with the Denting Blows for some massive maximum health damage. And with the Vault Breaker, he finishes them off. Taking out the Blind Monk in the bottom lane. That'll be 50 seconds that Double Lift can't push on to that base. And it looks like right now Jack Johnson are making the moves they need to defend this up. Some impressive play out of them. And I really hope that we can see an end to this game in just a couple of minutes so that my girlfriend doesn't hate me for the rest of forever. Let's see. Let's see. One more, one more team fight. We'll see if they can close it out here. In that case, I will uh, bolt out and leave you all Fabby 1v1ing on the Mega Zero. Peck and Wolf actually comes in here and is he, he is able to find the kill, but Nidus Remain turns around, finds one kill. Now might be a second one on the Peck and Wolf. He's so low. He does bounce away and he will be taken out there. Explosive cask though down and it will be the kill on to uh, Wings of Death X. Now Void Boss with the Dominus will be fighting on to two enemies. Hosh and Shin managing to survive. Volpreaker comes across on the Void Boss and that's actually... Almost three down if Sicko Scott can get in there. There's another Vault Breaker. He misses Void Boss, who slices and dices through. He tries to get some life steal from his Cole the Meek, but he will fall there finally to the Vault Breaker. And that's three members down here on each team. And this game will be continued. I am sorry to everyone, but I do have to uh, go pick up my girlfriend from the train. So uh, I will try and finish it later on. I don't know how soon that will be. I would recommend uh, not sticking around, but I will upload it on to YouTube later if you want to see the ending. <laughs> sorry about this, guys. Oops.